Welcome to Mountain Strong. Today we are at Point Warren Zoff Park, which is a park in the western part of the city of Anchorage. It's an interesting uh, park because it was a park that was named by a British lieutenant after a Russian ambassador. And I'm guessing that was a Russian ambassador to Britain, but I don't really know. I wasn't able to find that part of the story. Uh, but anyway, this park is actually uh, just along the ocean here. This is the ocean, and you can see the, the ice flow moving back in, one of the cool sites here in the wintertime. Uh, it's also located near uh, the, uh, the airport, and so there's going to be planes passing overhead. But uh, one of the cool things about uh, this part of the world is just how great of a tide there is. So the tide really pulls back here in the Cook Inlet and really comes back. Uh, I, I guess we're at low tide now because what you're looking at right here is a big chunk of ice that I'm guessing has just come up against the, uh, the shore or else a, a very eroded shoreline uh, covered with ice. Maybe I don't really know which one that is, but uh, anyway, I'm not going to dig down into it to find out. But anyway, uh, today we're going to be having a look at uh, Psalm 16 together. So let's go ahead and read that. It's another one of those Psalms that's on two pages, so please bear with me. So it says in verse 1, Preserve me, O God. For in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who shall run after another God shall multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures evermore. The psalmist opens up in verse 1 by saying he needs to be preserved. And the question in examining this psalm and trying to figure out what's going on here is, from what? A lot of the times the psalmist is facing an enemy as he pens the words of his uh, respective psalm. But here, the enemy seems to be that great enemy that's come up in a couple of psalms already, the enemy called death. You see, in verses 9 and 10, he talks about uh, his flesh needing to dwell secure and his soul going to Sheol, or the, the, the hidden place, uh, the equivalent of the New Testament Hades, or what we sometimes call the, the realm of the dead. So he's facing death, and in the face of death, uh, there is a little bit of fear. And we talked about before how it's actually okay to be afraid of death. There is a part of us, uh, looking at this as New Testament Christians, there's a part of us that actually longs for death, uh, that, that views death as Paul did in Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, for me to, to, to uh, live as Christ and to die as gain. There's a part of us that looks at it like that, but there's a part of us that understands that 1 Corinthians uh, 15 perspective, the idea that death is an enemy, an enemy that has yet to be defeated. Well. All the more reason back in the Old Testament before one rose from the dead to never die again, uh, can you expect there to be fear? But what does the psalmist do with his fear? Now it's interesting that in the face of fear, he does turn to God, but he turns to God as someone who is examining himself. And notice how it's, there, there's this immediate petition that's offered, but after the petition, we'll let that, pain, that plane go over. <laughs> After the petition that is offered to God, there's this, there's this kind of look back at himself, this turn inward where he starts to think uh, about himself and his, and his standing. And it is actually more so his self-examination that brings him confidence in the face of death than it is in, uh, than it is in his, his prayer that he offers to God. And, and that makes this psalm very unique. You know, there's actually um, something special to be therefore said about this psalm just before we even get into the words. You see, in the face of death, oftentimes uh, a lot of people face much more intense fear, panic even. A and the, the idea uh, that uh, comes to some people who, who don't approach death from the standpoint of faith is grasping at straws. I, I remember um, the, uh, the movie The Mummy. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, the old one with Brendan Fraser. I haven't seen the, the new one. But uh, in, the, in that movie, there's this character named Benny. And when he's face to face with a mummy and face to face with death, what does he do? He's got all these charms around his neck of various religious symbols. and he's 
he's trying to hold them up, trying to uh, appease the mummy with one of those symbols, uh, just grasping at straws. Well, uh, we don't want to grasp at straws in the face of death. We do want to be prepared. How did the psalmist know that he was prepared? Well, again, after verse 1, after where he, he uh, uh, asks for uh, some safety, some refuge uh, from the Lord, notice what he does. He says, I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. That is what faith is. Faith is the process of one, accepting the Word of God, but two, believing and trusting in that Word totally. And what does it mean? It means that when we look at God in faith, there is nothing to fear. Because why? In James chapter 1, verse 17, the thought is summarized by James perfectly, that God is a God who gives perfect gifts and gives them continually. There is no shadow of turning with Him. There is no variableness with Him. He doesn't change who He is. I am the Lord, I change not, he said uh, in, in the Old Testament. And so uh, when the psalmist looks at God, he says, I know who you are, you are a God of blessings. And that's his first point of confidence. But then he says, uh, number two, as for the saints in the land, this is actually verse three, uh, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. In, in continuing this healthy process of self-examination, he says, I know who God is. I know who the people of God are. I know they are, they are excellent people. I know they are people in whom uh, God has delighted. And so I know that being a part of that community of faith, I know that I am safe. Number three, in his, his sort of self-examination, he says, I, I haven't gone down the path that I see some going down of idolatry and giving up on God. He, he recognizes that sorrows run after those who serve other, God, uh, other gods. Uh, that, um, and, and he says, I'm not going to have any part of that. I'm not going to, to pour out the offerings like they pour them out. I'm not going to say the names of those gods from my lips, which of course is not what Benny did on the movie. But he then says, in uh, continuing that self-examination in verse 5, he says, The Lord is, is, cho is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. And I, and I appreciate what happens next. Sometimes people approach the end of life uh, full of regret. But how does the psalmist approach the end of his life? Plain, <laughs> how does the psalmist approach the end of his life? In verse number six, he says, the lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. Now there is uh, a, a first significance to the Israelite person reading that text, but then a second significance even at that time. In the, in the Old Testament world, if you were born into a Jewish family, you were born onto a plot of land that was your family's land and that would be your land all of your life. And so the, the, the psalmist considers his land, so to speak, his inheritance from the Lord, what he's lived uh, in, uh, or rather lived upon all of his life, and he says, this has been pretty good. No grass is greener on the other side for the psalmist. He's saying, this is good. Now, that's both true probably of his view of his, his physical inheritance, but as he thinks about what his life has been, the, the lines that God has drawn in his, his walk of faith, the places he, have, he has gone and the places he hasn't gone, he says, you know, this has been pretty good. There was a time uh, many years ago, I'm in my 30s, I shouldn't be saying many years, but anyway, uh, there was a time uh, a few years back uh, when um, I was a, a new preacher, uh, 21 years old when I started my first local work there in, uh, oh no, <laughs> uh, 20 years old when I started my first local work there in Jefferson City, Tennessee, and, and I had a plan for my life. I was going to uh, prepare myself there in Jefferson City uh, to preach the Word no matter what, and a part of that was getting a teaching degree, and uh, so I had, I had plans for staying there. I had plans for pursuing that degree at the University of Knoxville. Um, everything was, was set out in my mind. But then opportunities came and I, I began to step out in faith. You know, and as I look back on all of that, uh, through that, uh, the Lord has used me to do, I believe, good work in other parts of the world. Uh, the Lord has granted me a wife and, and two sons. Uh, through my overseas experience, I, I was able to meet uh, uh, my, my now wife. And um, I look at all of that and I say, well, what a blessing. And uh, I look forward to where the lines fall in uh, my walk with God and in my walk in faith because they fall in wonderful places. And so he says, upon that reflection then, uh, continuing his sort of self-examination, this is where I struggle to turn the pages. This is not an easy task in these, in these big uh, winter gloves. Yeah, that's graceful. All right. <laughs> and so he says in verse 70, I, I bless the Lord who, who gives me counsel. 
In the night also my heart instructs me. He says, God, is, God has not only blessed my life, he's taught me such wonderful things. And, and so um, wonderful things that not only uh, reform my intellect, but reform my heart. And when I think about uh, the word heart there, um, I'm, I'm thinking about, actually the actual word is kidneys. And uh, you say, well, kidneys, what is that all about? But w what he means is the seed of his emotions and decision making. You know how you kind of feel some decisions in your stomach? Well, in any event, he says, the, the Lord has, has given me counsel. That counsel has, has sunk down inside of me and, and altered my conscience. It's altered my perception of what is right and wrong, as it should. And so he says, at the conclusion of this sort of self-examination, this, this sort of personal inventory, he says, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. And then he therefore can approach the subject which prompted him to begin the self-examination the desire for refuge and protection in the face of death. After that self-examination, he says, Therefore my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices. I pray to the Lord that I can approach death like that, where I can look back on a life well lived, and I can say, I'm happy about this. It's okay to be afraid about it. It's okay, it's okay to view death as an enemy. It's okay to not desire to, to depart from those who need you. You know, to live is Christ, and, and a part of living is serving your family and your local congregation. Um, you know, all those things are, are precious and important. But to be able to know that death is coming, as the psalmist appears to be in old age knowing, and to be able to say, I'm glad about that, boy, that would be something that I, I would really treasure. He says, I'm not only confident because of all of these things, I'm confident about what's going to happen to this body of mine. My flesh dwells secure. You'll not abandon my soul to, to Sheol. You'll, you'll not let your Holy One see corruption. Now, of course, the psalmist is, is uh, being uh, somewhat uh, of an exaggerator for the sake of emphasis. Uh, the Super Bowl's coming up, and so that's called hyperbole. I mean, hyperbole. But anyway, he's exaggerating for the sake of emphasis. But you remember how this is used later in the New Testament? To actually refer to the Holy One of God, Jesus Christ, in Acts chapter 2. That doesn't negate what it means for the psalmist here. He's making a statement of faith about what's going to happen when he goes down into the ground. But it, it shows how God was using these, these poetic expressions to express his truth uh, for future generations. And it's beautiful the way the Word of God does that. He concludes this by saying, You make known to me the paths of life, or the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And again, just that beautiful confidence that comes from a life well lived, following and serving God. May God bless each of us to be able to face death with the kind of confidence we've seen in the psalmist today.